Today's one of those, those really sleepy days where you wake up and you just, you're just tired. So I think today we're gonna do a Photoshop tutorial where I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to remove, correct, uh, repair, blatantly take out, different ways to do this in Photoshop to make your photos that much cleaner. Well, let's get, let's get started. We don't, we don't need a big intro. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Like I said, I'm super tired today, so we're just gonna dive right into the tutorial. Now, uh, just a little note, this is gonna be a little bit more of an advanced tutorial because uh, I've already done the basic stuff, so I'm not gonna go over to the little nitty gritty stuff that I'm doing. I'm just gonna show you how to use these tools. If you want to see those basic, basic videos, I have those two links in the description below, so go check those out and then come back to this video. All right, so let's get started with Photoshop. Here we are, and we're gonna do this image. This image, it's nothing, spectacular, but it, it does have the elements where I can show you each little bit and each little tool that I'm gonna go over, but then it just requires you to practice these tools. It took me a while to get good at these, so it might seem like I'm doing fast, but it's lots and lots of time practicing and doing these over and over and over and trying different little aspects of it. The first one is super simple. It's the spot healing tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the background. We're gonna press Command or Control J to duplicate it. That way we always have an original to come back to. Then you're gonna press J on the keyboard, and then, or you can select it up here and make sure Spot Healing Brush Tool is selected. We're gonna do Command plus sign to zoom in, space bar to navigate through. We're gonna come over to these little white buoys here and we're just gonna remove them. So make your brush about the size of them and click, boom. Done. So that's super easy and that works on really tiny spots. Press Command zero to zoom back out. That works on really small spots like that. It works really simple and super fast. But let's say we wanna remove this barrier. So let's go ahead and zoom in, Command plus, and let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna just paint this and just paint the whole thing. Now I guarantee this is gonna look terrible. But for example sakes, let's see what it does. Wow. That's actually not too bad. I'm quite impressed with a little bit more, you know, you could do this and clean it up a little bit. But you notice it's kind of blurry. It doesn't really look super natural. I mean, you could, actually, you could probably pass for that, but I don't really like it. You could use this for that, but it's a lot of times, nine out of 10 times, it's not gonna work. Now, to undo this, we could do two different things. We could press Command Z and go all the way back. But if you look in the right side here, you should have a History tab. If you go to where you originally started, so Layer via Copy, just click on Layer via Copy, and boom, you're back to where you were. That's a really cool way to get back to um, a spot that you didn't like. And notice how I have the buoys back here, because we went all the way back. This, these two spot healing ones were the buoys, so we can go ahead and just get rid of those again but see, then it resets the history, but then you can always go back and start over. All right, so the next tool, the Spot Healing Brush tool works amazing, but it has its limits, so use it for the small things. Let's say we wanted to remove this dam here, this, this building here. Now we could use the Spot Healing Brush tool, and actually it works pretty good, but there is another way. Let's go ahead and press L for the lasso tool. We're going to go ahead and select here, Try and keep it as close in as possible. And wrap it around, bam. Okay, so now that we have that selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, go to Content Aware Fill. Now there's two ways to do this. This first one, Content Aware Fill. This is gonna bring into this screen here. Now if you zoom out, all this green is where it's potentially pulling from. So if you don't want it to take from any of the, the bridge, you just have to erase this part just erase that green, because we don't really care for it to be pulling from any of this kind of stuff. It's all trees, so it should all be trees, so none of this is necessary. Go ahead and erase all that green, and then if you look out here on the right, it gives you an example. So that looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and press OK, and boom, there you go. That whole thing is completely gone, and you notice there's a layer copy here, so if we turn that off, 
the dam is back. So it's non-destructive, which means you can always recover the information. If it was destructive, then you wouldn't be able to go back on that layer and get it back. In this case, we have a layer that's removing the dam, whereas we turn off that layer, then it's back. So that's one way. The other way, which doesn't create the layer, let's go ahead and select this again. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Oops. Okay, that was a very rough selection. Now, if you wanted to add something, like you see how I didn't get these poles here, you can keep the lasso tool, tool, press shift, and you get a plus sign around the lasso, you see that? And then just go like this, and it'll add that part. Now let's say you got a piece, let's say you got this whole part that you didn't want, press the option button, alter option I think, and then just go around like this, and you'll get a minus sign, and boom, it takes away that selection. So that's two little quick ways to add or adjust your selection if need be. One thing to note is notice how I have the layer copy selected. I wanna make sure that I have the layer one selected, not that, because if you have this selected, there's no data there other than the, the trees, so we want the actual layer with the item that we're trying to remove. The second way is what you can do is you go up to edit, you go to fill and content aware and color adaptation, that's all fine, and then press okay. It does all of that selecting and, and stuff automatically. It also doesn't create an additional layer. Now you'll notice that this is not as good as we had originally, and you'll also notice there's no layer, so we can't necessarily turn that off without going back to the background. So it doesn't, that's no good. I just wanted to show you the two different ways that you can do this because sometimes one way works better than another and vice versa. You just kind of have to figure it out on picture specific uh, situations. So in this case, we're going to undo that by pressing Control or Command Z. And then we're gonna deselect by pressing Control or Command D. And then we're gonna turn back these layers back on and we notice it's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up here, this little snow patch here, which is distracting. Press J, spot healing tool, boom, done. So next we're going to reconstruct this top of the mountain here. Now what tool are we gonna use for that? Because the data is not there, I can't just lower the highlights and get the mountains back, I, I tried. But we want that top, we want that curve of the mountain, so how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use something called this clone stamp tool. Now this, you might think, well, you use that to replace things or to remove things. Yes, but you can also use it to reconstruct things. So let's go ahead and press S on the keyboard, or you can click the clone stamp tool over here on the left side. Now, if you right click on it, make sure you have clone stamp tool selected. Then zoom in, command, command plus, and we're going to make the brush bigger, press option to make a uh, selection, let's say right here. Actually, we're gonna start here we're gonna just kinda, we're gonna build it up. Then we're just going to make our line here. Good, so that's that. Come over on the right side. We're gonna make our line here. And then, okay, so now we're at the top. So how do we, how do we fix that? Well, if you come to the right side, you'll see a little clone stamp tool called Clone Source. Now, if you don't have that here, go to Window, come down to Clone Source, and make sure that that is selected. It'll put it in this little tab over here. Now, on the middle right, you'll notice a little bracket here that shows an angle. Well, we can angle the clone tool. So we're gonna put minus 10% here. We're gonna make the brush smaller. We're gonna select here, and you'll notice it's slightly curved. So we're gonna click here, perfect. And then we're going to up it to minus 15. And then we're going to click here. And then we're gonna do minus 25. And this requires a little bit of practice just to get used to it. And then there you go. So then let's go ahead and zero it out and make a selection. And we're gonna fill in these little dark spots here. And make sure you make multiple selections from different places because it will look more natural that way. And there we go. Okay, good. And that looks decent, it looks okay. I'm gonna lower the flow here. Okay, here's the difference. There's two different ways you can adjust your brushes in, in Photoshop as a whole. Opacity is how strong, how much at full strength your, your, uh, your brush is. So if you have a 50% opacity, you're using 50% the strength, but you're still using a full brush, if that makes sense. A flow is kinda like 
if you if you think of in terms of ink, it's the amount of ink you're using. The lower the flow, the less ink you're using. So the more the flow, the more ink at one time you're using. And if you have a low flow, you can put more and more bits of ink on it. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit, little bit difficult to understand, but we're gonna lower the flow to 40%. And we're going to just kind of touch this up a little. There we go. See how it smooths it out a little? A little bit less ink, so to speak. Okay, good. Bam. So now we have reconstructed the mountain using just the clone stamp tool. Here's the before and here's the after. Now that looks much better just simply by using the clone stamp tool. So now the next thing we're gonna do with the clone stamp tool is remove this barrier. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And we're gonna actually put this on a layer. So click on the right side on the layer one copy. Usually I do all my clone stamp corrections on a layer above my working layer because it's non-destructive. I can always remove whatever I'm doing if I make a mess up. The other thing you have to make sure that is selected to make this work is up here is current and below. Make sure it says current and below, not current layer. So for example, if I do current layer and I make a sample here, nothing's there because there's nothing on this layer. So if I make this current and below, I make a sample here, then suddenly I get that, that selection from the bottom layer. Now notice, you see how the flow is at 40% and you can still see the little bit of the, um, the barrier? Well, as we just continually paint on it, it gets less and less. So it just makes it a little bit more subtle and a little bit more natural. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here, we're gonna make a selection here. Let's go ahead and paint that straight on. And then we should be able to just kinda paint around, because if you notice the plus sign on the right side follows, so it stays in line. When you get to a line, make sure to put it straight on. That's how you set your point. So you see the line here, sample right there, and then come over here, make sure the line is lined up, and then go ahead and paint along just like that. And then just keep make, making selections here and there until you get it looking good and natural and it doesn't look weird. <laughs> All right, go ahead and zoom out and there we go. Now we can take the spot healing brush tool and we can clean up a little bit here just to get rid of the rep repetitions. That way it looks more and more natural and it smooths it out. Okay, oh, that didn't look good. Okay, good. That looks pretty good. So there's your three tools for you. You got the spot healing tool, which does the small minor things. You got the clone stamp tool, which can remove things and repair things. And you get the content aware fill, which can actually help remove objects as well as replace objects. So you can use that same tool, let's say in the sky, to fill in some holes, circle the hole in the clouds, and then just erase everything that doesn't apply and it should fill it in pretty well. And that's all there is to it. Those are some simple tips in Photoshop to get you guys cleaning up your photos and making them look that much better. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I do videos like this every Monday at 7 p.m. Like the video if this was helpful. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next Monday at 7 p.m. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>